going on guys welcome back to crazy for kv's rc i'm tim welcome back to my channel so i'm just going to warn you if you've been in rc for a while this video is probably not for you so we're going to be starting a new three-part series where i'm going to be talking about the tools that i think everybody should have at the level they're at within the hobby so we're going to do a beginner that's going to be this one uh intermediate and then advanced there's going to be some stuff in the advanced video that's a little bit off the wall and some things that maybe you don't think about every day or that you don't consider part of RC tools, but they can help take your builds to the next level. So I've got a pile of things sitting here in front of me. Uh, sorry about the harsh angle, but it's the only way I can get you know the workbench in and also me. So this is going to be a relatively simple list. So if you've been in the hobby for a while, this video is not for you, like I said. So you won't hurt my feelings. Go check out another one of my videos here and uh, I'll see you guys on the intermediate and advanced levels. But before you go, post a comment down below. What's the number one tool you wish you knew about when you were first starting out or you wish that you had in your toolbox earlier on? So you just got your first car or maybe your second car and you haven't really figured out what kind of tools you should have in your toolbox for working on them, maintaining them and fixing them. So we're gonna do a little bit of a walkthrough, some things I think everybody should have when they first start or should get pretty early on. And it'll just make your life so much easier. So there's some old saying about having the proper tool for the job. And this kind of hits that, but a lot of these aren't the best tool for the job. They are the tools that will get the job done. So the first key thing you need to have is a flat workspace and preferably a dedicated workspace. Maybe spaces at a premium where you live, maybe you live in an apartment where your house is just jam packed with family and that's okay. Not everybody gets a whole spare bedroom like me, but it's definitely imperative that you have a place to work, a flat space, you're not gonna lose screws or parts. And maybe it's just a fold up table that you get out when it's time to rent and that's okay too. Been there, had that for a while, no big deal. So the second key thing, you know, once you start wrenching, and most of this stuff is gonna be geared towards your 110 scale things. Um, once you start getting into the larger scale, eighth scale, seventh, sixth, um, you know, I have an X-Max and a Mojave, those sit in the garage. And when I work on those, I usually fold the table out and do that in the garage. But for your smaller scale, your, your 10th scale, um, anything smaller, working inside definitely prefer, especially as it gets hot or cold, depending on where you live. I don't like working in the garage when it's 100 outside or when it's 30. So it's nice to have an indoor space, keeps your hands a little more nimble and uh, makes things much more enjoyable and makes the wrenching process way more fun. Now for some people, wrenching is where most of the enjoyment comes from in the hobby. I like to think my enjoyment for the hobby is about 60% wrenching, building, modifying, and about 40% driving. Um, I definitely enjoy the planning process and the build a little bit more than driving, but I also love getting them out and running them. And I don't think that really happened until my tools uh, got better and things became a little bit easier. So with this set of tools, wrenching may seem a little bit more like a chore, but as you do it more and more, reward yourself, maybe skip an upgrade and buy a better set of tools and we'll go over those on the next episode and on the intermediate level. And that's going to be pretty comprehensive. And that's where I think most people fall as well. So while not the most sexy or the best part of having tools is having a place to set your cars on, especially if you're taking wheels and tires off. Um, for a while, I was using like an old cardboard box. I used pretty much everything I could find to prop things up. I'd use stacked up old tires and they end up just being kind of floppy, but I'd say at a bare minimum, get yourself something like this. This is a cell block. It's closed cell foam. It's from Crawler Innovations. I think they're 12 to $15, depending on if they're on sale or not. These are really nice and they're super durable. This is what I use to display my cars on their shelves. It keeps flat spots off the crawlers, um, especially with those softer foams in them. And yeah, it just makes it nice. You can just set your vehicle up here. It spins pretty easily, even with quite a bit of weight on it because it's smooth on the bottom. And yeah, it's just nice to have a stable place to work. They make a couple different options. They make this one, um, which is kind of a perfect cube. And then they also make one that's a little more elongated, like a rectangle. And for your uh, little bit bigger vehicles, it's gonna make them a little bit more stable. So a couple different options. They also make one with holes in the top to use for shock building. 
You guys can barely see me, but this is another one I do like. This is from Eco Power. This is kind of starting to teeter into what I consider like the next level, but this has little detents in it for it to spin. You can hear them clicking. Makes maintenance really easy. I've got my C3, it's done. And you guys will see that video very soon. Um, haven't ran it yet. The weather's kind of crummy, but let's move this. But this Eco Power tool stand is really nice. Um, it's got the holes for shocks, some different sizes as well, and super lightweight. So moving right along to the third most important thing I think you need to have, and that's a good set of tools, hex drivers and nut drivers. So for starting out, I recommend something like this Duratrax little tool set. It comes in this little pouch. You got some Phillips, you got some flathead. You've got your nut drivers, five different sizes from four millimeter up to eight millimeter, kind of all your uh, most common for 10 scale. You also have six. You also have six hex drivers. These are double sided. And these just key into this wrench and you can adjust the length, which is really nice. If you've got a hard reach spot, I will still use this from time to time. Um, if I can't get in somewhere, but yeah, these are really nice, super affordable. I think these are like 20 or $25 and it's got ratcheting on it as well. I've uh, kind of broke the clutch in it, so it doesn't ratchet great anymore, but still gets the job done. It's also got some box wrenches in it. It's got uh, five, five and a half, seven and eight millimeter, I believe they're not labeled. Um, I also just keep one of these little four ways in there. Um, this used to be my kind of my trail kit, but then this one kind of just sits in my truck in case I forget my kit and I'm out and I need to fix something or lend it to somebody. But as you upgrade and you get better tools for your workbench, this folds up nice and tidy. You can put it in a cargo pocket, a backpack, and you'll always have pretty much any tool you need in there. So an alternative for a tool kit like that is something even more budget friendly. And it's just one of these small little like RC multi-tools. A couple of different people make these. This one's by Dixieland RC. I think it's just rebranded, I'm not sure. Just a little hex driver handle. It's got a quarter inch and then it's got some bits in the handle of it. So this has your 1.5, your two millimeter, your 2.5 and your three millimeter. Um, there's just a little O-ring that seals it and these just slot in real nice. It's magnetic so they don't fall out. Um, yeah, these aren't bad for, especially for a trail kit, but um, I wouldn't recommend just going with something like this. It's a little bit nicer to have a little bit bigger, more ergonomic handle. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of uh, hand fatigue as you're long wrenching sessions. CCXRC makes one. Uh, Reefs makes one. Theirs is quite a bit more expensive. is isn't 40 or $50. I think Dixieland on his website charges like 15 may even be cheaper than that. Um, I'll post the link down below, like I said, for everything you see here, as long as it's still being made. Additionally, from Dixieland RC, I got what I call like a first aid kit. So this just has some common screw types. It's got, you know, your 10 mil, 12 mil, it looks like eight and six mil. It's got some nuts, it's got some washers, body clips, uh, hex pins, and some little O-rings. It also has a four way in there as well. So if you're out on the trail and you pair these things up, um, not much is going to be able to stop you. I would probably go ahead and replace or just supplement with uh, some longer ones, maybe a couple like 16 mil, and you should be good to go. The next tool you're definitely going to need as you're starting out is a pair of needle nose pliers. Uh, you can just get a cheap set. This actually came with my 3D printer to help assemble it, and it's been great. I use it almost every single day. I have nicer sets, but uh, I like these. They're spring loaded, they're small. Um, the jaws on them are pretty decent. They're fairly precise. Uh, they've got some like glue on them. They've got Loctite on them. They've been beat up, but um, just get a cheap set. You can go to Harbor Freight. You can go to Walmart, any of the big box stores. You can get a variety pack, but don't break the bank on these because they don't need to be super precise. Um, sometimes you just can't get a four-way or a nut driver in and you just need to hold the nut or put a screw into a hole. Um, and a pair of pliers can come in handy. So moving along from the pliers, the next tool I recommend is these uh, flush cuts. And this is just a pair I got on Amazon. I think I paid maybe $10. There's a bunch of different ones. 
Um, I'll post a link to something similar. You know, this isn't going to be a Nipix level quality or Nipex, whatever you call it. But um, these are great for if you're building a kit and you need to cut parts out of parts trees. Um, they're nice and sharp. You can clean up edges. You can do a little bit of trimming on something if you need to. But these are great. I usually have a brand new set laying around. And when I move on to the newest set, I order another one. So I always have one on standby. So speaking of cutting, uh, a couple different cutting options for dressing parts that come out of parts trees, just cleaning up the plastic, prying on things. Not a great idea with a razor. Sometimes they go flying. So use eye protection if you're going to do that um, or squint real hard. That'll protect your eyes. This is just an Excel hobby knife. It uses a number 11 blade, super sharp, razor sharp. Um, I have two. I have one that has an old blade in it that I use for applying grease, cutting things that don't need to be cut super precise. And then I have one with a new blade in it. So a lot of times I just switch it over and throw the oldest one out. Alternatively, something you already probably have laying around your house, box cutter. These don't work quite as well for our hobby, but they will get the job done and something you don't have to buy right away. So along the lines with the four way, um, I actually really like these. these. This is from Arma. This came with one of my Arma kits. It's a larger four-way, so it's got 17 mil. This is for the bigger wheel nuts that come on some of the bigger vehicles. It's got a 10 mil, an eight, and a seven. And uh, eight's what Vanquish uses for their wheel nuts. Their axle stubs are a little bit beefier. And then seven is pretty much all the other brands. So if you get a wheel nut on a little too tight and your nut driver, um, save your hand and grab something like this or just keep it handy. So we're getting pretty close to wrapping things up. Um, the, one of the last few things I want to mention is having some grease and some thread lock. And this is just something handy I was able to grab. This was in my uh, trail kit. And this is a little thing of Vanquish thread lock. It's red, but it's actually blue in terms of formula. Um, and then this is a thing of their grease. These are sealed up. I don't have to worry about them leaking, but uh, I can cut them open if I need it. So for my last item, if you guys are going to use an electric drill, you're going to need some drivers. And there's a lot of different options. You can spend a lot of money on the RC specific, especially the hardened ones. But I recommend for starting out, if you're gonna have a budget drill, you can just get a budget set of tips. These are off Amazon. This is a full set of metric tips all the way from 1.5 up to eight millimeters. So quite large in terms of hex heads. Um, your, but it does have your 1.5, your two mil, 2.5 and your three. So your major sizes. These aren't the most precise. I know the 1.5 in particular, I did strip a few using this. So it's one of the reasons I upgraded. Yeah, pardon the interruption, but I realized while I was editing this video that the Ryobi that you guys saw there sitting on the workbench probably, it's a eight volt, nothing special. I bought it when I built my first kit just to kind of save my wrists a little bit. And I think I got it on clearance for 40 or $50, a little steep even I'd say for the beginner level. So if you're looking to use an electric screwdriver, um, I have a couple different alternatives for you. The first one, and I would say probably the best is here at Walmart. And originally I kind of glossed over this because it's $18 and I thought, how good could it be? It's a four volt, so not very powerful. And it doesn't have replacement batteries. The battery is internal, so you have to charge it on a wall charger. But some of the nice features are um, if you look here, there's a couple different configurations. You can have it in like a straight screwdriver or you can have it in the pistol grip. Uh, and that's pretty cool. You'll see me and you'll see a lot of people use the DeWalt eight volt gyro, uh, with the clutch. And that is, uh, going to be in my advanced, uh, video because it's not cheap. It's about 115 bucks, but, um, yeah, this is a great budget option. That seems like it's kind of a good entryway. So I've never used anything four volt. I've only had eight volt or higher. So I don't know that this is going to have all the power you need, but I suspect it'll probably get the job done for most things. The other thing I always look for, um, anytime now is I look for a clutch and they don't advertise a clutch, but it looks like in this picture, it has an adjustable clutch right here. Another option I have for you, if you're a little bit weary of that hyper tough from Walmart, is this Bauer from Harbor Freight. Additionally, this also has the two different configurations. You can use it straight like a screwdriver or a kind of a, a pew pew grip. But this is quarter inch as well, four volt. So very similar. The only thing is I do not see any signs of a clutch on this one. So 
Uh, if I was going to spend my $15 to $20, I would definitely go with the one from Walmart. Let me know in the comments if you guys are interested in me picking up one of these Hyper Tufts and just doing like a real quick five minute review on it, seeing how it compares to my Dewalt. Um, you could buy almost 10 of these for the price of the Dewalt. So if it's just a longevity issue or the batteries, you could buy two or three of these and just have two on the charger at all times. But post a comment, let me know if you're interested and uh, I wouldn't mind spending some money and picking it up if you guys wanna see that. Back to the regular video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this beginner tools walkthrough. Um, welcome to the hobby. I think I speak on behalf of everyone in the hobby when I say welcome and we're glad to have you. And hopefully the wrenching and the working on things doesn't discourage you from getting out and running more often. I think everybody goes through waves where you really do not like to fix broken things. I've had an X-Max with a broken A-arm for three or four months. So um, I definitely go through it, especially with specific cars. But I will say spend a little bit of money and get some tools um, because it's just going to make things easier. You don't want to be making repairs with the tools that your vehicles came with. It'll be really discouraging and probably steer you away from the hobby. So whether you just got your first RC or you're relatively new, you're going to see a lot of people on YouTube using some very fancy tools. And those are great. Um, usually you get what you pay for to an extent. I've always ran with the idea of buy cheap the first time. And if you end up wearing it out, breaking it, that means you're using it enough that you warrant a nicer one. So when you buy again, buy a little bit nicer and eventually you'll have a suite of nice tools and you'll probably have a bunch of like very cheap tools that you rarely use. But that being said, you don't have to have the greatest thing right off the bat. And when you're ready to upgrade, watch my intermediate and advanced level and I'll have some ideas there for you on how to take your tool kit to the next level. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for checking out Crazy for KB's RC and making it to the end of the video. If you like what you saw, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and ring the notification bell. Feel free to leave a comment down below. Let me know if there's something you'd like to see me do or do differently. Open to feedback. Um, check me out on Instagram. That's crazy for KB's underscore RC. Link down below as well. And uh, first episode of the podcast is live. And you can find that on Spotify or Anchor FM. Links in the description. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys next time.